Uh, hello and welcome. Uh, this is the uh, second of five Greylog Tech Talks. This is Brad Six, Technical Product Evangelist at Greylog, and I'm here with Nick Carsonson, Security and Integrations Product Manager at Greylog. Uh, in today's Tech Talk, we're going to discuss some of the most important dashboards that you should be uh, monitoring uh, when dealing with a remote workforce. Uh, as we discussed in last week's uh, Tech Talk about increased VPN and firewall logs due to the remote workforce, Today, Nick is going to help us understand what types of data and dashboards you should be build, uh, building to monitor uh, in Greylog to provide insight to your remote workforce. So Nick, what can you recommend um, that, that our customers can do uh, uh, to get those dashboards set up? Sure. Uh, you can go ahead and switch that slide there. Yep. Right, there you go. Um, yeah, so obviously the first one that's probably the most common and the most relevant is just do a trend analysis of your data over time. This one here I have, and this can be applied to any type of data that you have, but I have it around authentication data. And the reason I think that you should do the trending data is that you can find different aspects of your, of your events that are happening. Excuse me. A lot of times when people look at things at a one day period, they see, well, this had 2000 logons or they see a huge drop from yesterday. But when you can look this over a 14 day period, you can start to see that the trends, even though one day is bigger or smaller than the next, is not really that much different than the normal. So you can see here, I have a graph up of 14 day trending window. Um, the one thing you can notice right away though is around maybe April 23rd, there's something that happened. Maybe your domain controller was offline or your authentication source, or maybe that the, your logging instance just wasn't gathering data like it should be. But that'd be something you could go back and do an investigation about. The other thing that you can see inside of here by looking at this data is that there's not really anything over 2000 logons in a day. So the success is those blue bars, they never really hit above 2000. So this would be a great spot to put a correlation rule or an alert rule in that's saying, hey, if I see over 2,000 logons in a day, let me know, give me an alert, because maybe there's a huge jump up of that. I usually like to set that about 10% higher just to give it a little bit of fluctuation. So maybe something around 2,200 successful logons, then you could have that as a uh, alert rule for you and get that in your system. But the idea of getting these trend views in there will help you find that needle in the haystack, even though you can't normally see that just if you look at one day at a time. All right, great. Uh, with so many people working remotely today, uh, can Greylog provide a view uh, into where users are logging in from and if those uh, logins are successful or not? Uh, and what kind of information can you gain from knowing where your workforce is located? Yeah, yeah, sure. So Greylog does have that ability um, through our geolocation services that we have, that on any logs with IP addresses, you can go ahead and pull off where in the world it's located at. And you, it's crucial that you want to actually track the location of your logon, especially during this time, Everybody's at home and logging on, but you want to know where they're actually coming from. So just because it's a successful logon, most people don't track that or don't even think about it because it's successful. So it's a, it's a approved and a valid response. But what if that successful logon was from a foreign country? So if we can plot those on a map, like you see here, there's two colors there really. One's a red and one's a, a yellow, but one is a successful logon and one's a, a failed logon. But if you start plotting those on a map, you can start to see where's your workforce coming from. In this case, maybe you, know, you don't allow anything from India, so you want to start investigating those, and you can do your drill downs and look at that as well. You'll also notice that as we plot this on the map, some of those circles are smaller and bigger. We do the size differentiation, so you can start to see where most of those coming from. The larger circles indicate more logs coming from that one, as they have. Um, you can also, with this stuff, you can also track kind of the services that they're accessing. So are they accessing Maybe your, your mail server inside or different SharePoint servers that you have inside. Um, you can also track what kind of devices are there. Depending on the firewall and the VPN access type that you have where they're logging into, you can actually look at the device types. So if most people or your corporate policies to use a Windows device and now you start to see Macs or Linux box comes in, maybe you want to alert on that or just create a report to saying, you know, Nick in this case is logging on from a Linux box instead of a Windows box. So and then again, like, like I said before, it's also good just to know a lot of people will create these maps that I've seen in Greylog on a one, um, one setting. So they'll only do a data plot on one point, like a, a failure log on. But what we really want to do is have both successfuls and failures on there. It does create a more enriched map where you can start to see patterns over time. If you see most all your successes are just from any of the United States, then you're good. And if people remotely will always fail logging on. So one of the biggest challenges that I can see from a remote workforce is uh, issues of users not being able to get logged in. 
Um, I can imagine there are a lot of uh, account lockouts and other account related issues. Uh, can Graylog help provide a view into those types of issues as well? It can, yeah, definitely. So a lot of times with your service desk, what you'll get is somebody will call in saying, hey, I can't get into my account, it's got locked out somehow. Uh, but you'll wanna do a little bit of investigation into that. And we have different dashboards that can help with that. We call them user drill downs. So as you find one piece of log information or you wanna enter a username, you can click on it and drill into that user. As you can see up here on this dashboard, I have different ones all around one user in particular. You know, the different successful attempts they've had in the past 24 hours, how many failed attempts, what kind of countries they came from and IP addresses. But here you can plot everything out about that person and understand what is actually happening. Why are they getting locked out? Is it because somebody's trying to you know, brute force their account by guessing their password over and over again? Or maybe they changed it on a Friday before they went home and now it's Monday and they completely forgot that. So you can drill in, and I kind of blew this section up here just to see that. But now you can actually see exactly what IPs are they coming from. Maybe they put a password into a script or a service and it's, they changed it on a Friday and now it's failing over and over again over the weekend and it keeps locking them out. But now you can start to see by the count of what computer it is and how many times they're failing from that account or that IP address. That's kind of the first one in there. Um, again, by drilling down and looking at that though, you can also look at the different types of, of authentications. Um, you can kind of see it back there on the user authentication and access in the bottom left side. But you can see, is it a local logon? You know, is it somebody logging onto the local workstation? Or is it an RDP session? Are they coming in and RDPing to a different desktop? And you can pull that out from your Windows logs. Again, it's something interesting to keep track of. Most people probably don't RDP into it. They usually use like a Citrix service or VDI. But a lot of people should be logging on locally to their desktop. And then kind of the last one around here that I like to think about, and it's not in this screenshot, but you also want to do prioritization around different employees. So I'm sure like everybody knows, not all employees have the same preference and the same um, targetability from a hacker perspective. Obviously CEOs and, and people with full domain admin rights are more targeted. We wanna have that ability too to create dashboards around maybe a group of those users and then look at them. You know, see where are the admins or the domain admins coming from? Are they coming from a foreign country? Is anybody trying to break in with them? Are they trying to uh, elevate their privileges as well into those privileged accounts? So aside from the uh, user access issues, what are some of the other uh, security concerns that you can uh, look for, or set up a dashboard for uh, in Greylog? Yeah, um, so kind of like I mentioned just a second ago about those privileged accounts, I'd say the next one would be monitoring your administrators. We, now more than ever, we're trusting people that are remote to do our full administration of our network while they're sitting remotely. But you do need to monitor those guys. A lot of these times people are on their home computers they also do other things on their home computers, their banking, their you know, video games, things like that. It could be compromised and then having a backdoor into your, your network once they VPN in to do their normal job. So we wanna be able to track them on a daily basis and understand what are they doing while they're VPN in. You know, if you can start to see, are people creating new users while they're in there? And you know, maybe that's only done by your help desk. So you wanna know that. Why is your domain admin creating a user that's there? Maybe they do it to create an account to do something else nefarious and then they clean up their tracks. And that usually comes in kind of with that one dashboard up there with clearing your event logs. So after you have all these actions that are happening, usually people want to clear the event logs so they don't get caught. Uh, obviously, if you're gathering your logs in real time, this won't be an issue. We'll see it inside a gray log first and always keep it there so they can't modify it going forward. Um, you also want to watch for things that are happening around changing for, like I mentioned, accounts, but also security policies. So if they can come in and modify your GPO or any kind of security policy that you might have, you want to monitor for that and alert on it. You know, are they changing your password policy? Are they setting um, unlimited failed password attempts so they can brute force somebody's account? Let's monitor for that and alert on it if it happens. Now, again, and also as far as I said before, but creating those backdoor accounts, maybe they want to have one there um, that's set up as a script. So I have one there by scheduled tasks. So if you create an account and use it temporarily, that's great. But if you could schedule a script to create that account in the middle of the night when you know you have access, you know, set it up for midnight, it'll create the account, give you full admin rights. Then you can come in between midnight and six in the morning, it'll delete it off by six in the morning when nobody's monitoring this. So we wanna watch for those scheduled jobs. And that's just one use case you can do for scheduled jobs, but there could be many different use cases around that. Um, and then also just normal things like people getting added to do admin groups that might happen. Uh, people you know, putting local administrator on their box, people installing software, especially administrators, you wanna know what kind of software they're installing. That's not on this dashboard here, but 
the same idea of monitoring what are these admins doing day to day. All right, uh, another item that I, I just thought of that uh, can raise an issue is uh, remote workforce using their own equipment uh, or unauthorized assets to log into the corporate network. Uh, can Greylog provide a view into that as well? You can, yeah. Um, so a couple ways of doing that. The first one, obviously, like I have a, a screenshot up here, you can quickly see on the left side that some of those follow naming standard, right? So the, the Greylog Lab DC1 and the member one kind of follows a naming standard as part of the domain, but there's this weird one called Jumpbox in the middle. You can visually look at this stuff and see that if you want to. Gather all the logs on all the different sources that you're, you're seeing on your network, finding out if any of those are not part of your, your normal naming scheme. The other side that we can do is actually integrate through dynamic lists or different um, lookup tables and have actually a full data set of your corporate assets. So you can sync these via any method that you want, um, SSH, you know, go out, grab the new data set, bring it back in. And then Greylog itself can monitor this lookup table in real time and say, is this source a company approved asset? Yes or no? And you can do that based upon MAC address or source name. And then you can actually tag that into the log if you'd want to and say company approved asset or not company approved asset. And then you can create a dashboard around that new tag that you want. So a few ways of doing that that you want, um, but you definitely want to see when other systems are logging on. Maybe your corporate policy allows that to happen, but most people want to have only company approved devices logging on your corporate infrastructure. And then also, if you can see that, do you want to put different security around those devices? And you know, maybe if it's not part of your corporate build process, maybe you make them go through two factor authentication to do that. But this way you could say, here's some people that are coming in without two-factor authentication, and then go ahead and give them a token or whatever they might need, Okta or something similar to that. But again, again, putting people in a dynamic list or lookup tables is probably the best way of doing that. You can keep that updated. It's very fast through our pipeline processing to do that and keep, a, and keep track of that. Um, the other one that you can also do, if you know it's not part of your corporate assets, is actually put a different risk rating around it. So if you know it's not um, you know, corporate built device, maybe you want to up the risk rating of that one. So that way you can zero in on it and find it faster too. That's some great information, Nick. Um, is there any, anything else that Greylog is doing today that can assist end users in getting more security, security related data out of the Greylog instance? Yes, yes, actually there is. Um, so right now our team, or my team that I have at Greylog, we're creating what we call a security content pack did briefly mention this last week as well about our common schema that we have out there. We are creating a schema and then also creating content around that. So the first one is around authentication and information in general, and it's gonna be based around the Windows clients, um, wanting WinLog bead or NX log, as well as things like domain controllers, uh, 2016 and above, Windows infrastructure. But we'll have a bunch of dashboards like you've seen here and other ones that are built into the product but then we'll give you a bunch of pre-built parsing rules and dashboards around that to monitor your infrastructure, drill downs of users and sources, as well as we'll have start having correlation rules in there as well as alert rules. They'll be out of the box. But if anybody's interested in joining that beta program, please let us know. You can reach out to, uh, I think it's Tech Talks at Greylog, and we can set you up and get in touch with you and set you up part of that beta program but we are looking for beta clients to help test this and give us feedback and how we can improve it. All right, thanks a lot, Nick. Definitely. Um, we know that there's a lot of challenges in getting meaningful dashboards set up and having a team to monitor them. Uh, I hope this data that we presented today was helpful uh, and provided some guidance on what you should be monitoring. In if you have questions, uh, please send them to techtalks at graylog.com and you can follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Reddit. Uh, remember, we have Tech Talks, so be on the lookout for invitation. 7 May, uh, monitoring for insider threats in turbulent times. 14 May, coll collaborating uh, to improve availability, root cause analysis. Uh, and 21st of May, threat hunting techniques for today's biggest threats. Uh, thanks for attending today. Uh, hopefully, uh, you, you got some uh, good information, and uh, we like look to see you on the, uh, the next call. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you.